Welcome to Simply Explained English. I am Lisa. And I'm Eric. Do you want to improve your English easily? If so, you're in the right place. So let's get started and make English learning easy. So Eric, what are the words today? The first word today is temporary. Then we will continue with permanent and to destroy, then to leave out. And the final one is at the drop of a hat. Okay, let's start with the first word. Today's first word is temporary. 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 Temporary is an adjective and it means lasting for only a short period of time. When something is temporary, it's not going to stay forever. It's just for a short or a limited time. Exactly. We use temporary to talk about things that are only for a short while. For example, you might have a temporary job that you do for a few weeks or months. Eric, could you give us an example sentence? Sure. Here's the first example. She took a temporary job at the store while she looked for something else. It means that she worked at the store for a short time, but she was planning to find another job soon. Good example, Eric. This is mine. The store is closed during the temporary repairs. This means the store will only be closed. For a short period of time during the repair, it is not completely closed. Great example. Now, a quick note. Temporary is an adjective, and temporarily is an adverb, which is very common as well. For example, the office will be closed temporarily because of the snow. Good note, Eric. Okay, now let's hear a short dialogue using the word temporary. I heard you moved to a new apartment. Are you planning to stay there for a while? Not really. It's just a temporary place until I find something better. Oh, I see. That makes sense. A temporary house is a good choice until you find a good place to live. Exactly. I don't want to rush into anything too quickly. That dialogue shows how temporary is used to describe something that is only meant to last for a short time. Yes, and it's a very practical word that you'll hear in many different situations. Definitely. It's used a lot when people talk about short-term plans or situations. It helps people understand that something will not continue for a long time. And it's a very helpful word in both casual and more serious conversations when talking about things that will change soon. Exactly. So remember, if you want to talk about something that is only for a short period, you can use the word temporary or temporarily as an adverb. Well, that's all for the word temporary. We hope you learned its meaning. I hope so, Lisa. Shall we move on to the next word? Yes, please, Eric. Okay, our next word today is permanent. 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 Permanent means something that continues for a very long time or forever. It's the opposite of temporary. Yeah. We use permanent to describe things that are meant to continue for a long time, like a permanent job, a permanent marker, or a permanent solution. Eric, let's give some example sentences. Sure. Here's the first example. After renting for years, they finally bought a permanent home. It means that they now own a house where they can stay for as long as they want. Here's another example. The tattoo artist warned that the design would be permanent. It means that once the tattoo is done, it will stay on the skin forever and cannot be easily removed. By the way, a quick note, permanently it is an adverb that is very common as well. For example, smoking is likely to damage your health permanently. Good point, Eric. Now let's listen to a short dialogue using permanent. I'm really happy they finally offered me a permanent position in the company after working for two years as a temporary employee. 
That's fantastic, Jack. A permanent position gives you more job security. Exactly. I don't have to worry about looking for another job anytime soon. In this dialogue, we can see the difference between Sarah's temporary job and her new long-term position. Eric, what would you say about the word permanent? Like temporary, it can be used in both formal and informal situations. It's a very useful word in many contexts. And it's quite common. We use it often to talk about lasting situations or things that don't change in a short time. Good explanation. Any tips for our listeners on how to use it, Eric? Yes, I have. Permanent is the opposite of temporary. Use it when you want to emphasize that something will last for a very long time or forever. Yes, and remember, making a permanent decision is often a big step. So think carefully. Well said, Lisa. Thank you, Eric. Okay, shall we move on to the next word? Yes, let's do that. The next word is destroy. 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 Destroy is a verb, and it means to completely ruin or damage something so that it no longer exists or can't be used anymore. When you destroy something, you make it unusable. Exactly. You can use destroy to describe situations where something is severely damaged, whether it's an object, a place, or even an idea. Thanks for your contribution, Lisa. Let's give some examples of sentences. Here's my example. The fire destroyed the old house. It means that the fire burned the house so badly that it was completely damaged and could not be used anymore. Good example, Eric. This is mine. They had to destroy the old bridge to build a new one. It means they had to break down the old bridge completely so that they could build a new one. Let's talk a little more about the word destroy. It's a very strong word, and it's used when something is completely ruined or wiped out. Yes, and destroy can be used both literally and figuratively. For example, you can destroy physical objects, like buildings or cars. But you can also use it figuratively, like destroying someone's confidence or destroying a reputation. Let me give an example. She made one bad mistake and it destroyed her career. Good example, Eric. Okay, let's listen to our dialogue about to destroy. Did you see the news? The storm destroyed several houses in the village. Yes, it was terrible. The strong winds and heavy rain caused so much damage. The storm not only destroyed houses, but also destroyed people's hopes, future plans, and everything. It must be so hard to lose everything like that. Absolutely. When things are destroyed, it takes time and effort to start over. Useful dialogue, Eric, isn't it? Yes, Lisa. In the dialogue, we hear destroy which is used to describe how the storm caused severe damage to the neighborhood. It completely ruined homes and belongings. Yes, and this shows that destroy is a very strong word. It's used when something is damaged so badly that it can't be repaired or brought back. Eric, do you think destroy is a common word in English? It's quite common. You'll hear it often in everyday conversation when people are talking about severe damage or something being ruined. It's also used in news reports, especially when discussing natural disasters or accidents. Exactly. So remember, when you want to describe something being ruined completely, you can use the word destroy. Okay, I think we explained the word destroy fairly enough. Let's move on to our next word. Our next word today is leave out. Leave out. Leave out. Leave out means to not include or take out something or someone, either by accident or on purpose. That's right. 
It's often used when talking about forgetting to add something or choosing not to keep it. Let's look at some examples. Here's the first example. Don't leave out any important details when you write your report. It means that when writing a report, you should include all the important information and not forget anything. Here's another example. We left John out of the team photo because he was late. It means that John wasn't included in the photo because he didn't arrive on time. Good example, Eric. Now, let's listen to a short dialogue using leave out. Jake, I think we should leave out the complicated graphs from our presentation. They might confuse people. I agree. Let's keep it simple and only include the most important points. Sounds good. And now, let's make sure not to leave out any key information. Definitely. We need to cover all the main ideas clearly. That was a nice example, Eric. It shows how leave out is used when deciding what to include or not include in something. Now, let's talk about this phrase. What would you say about leave out, Eric? It's more informal, Lisa. We use it in everyday conversations, but in formal writing, we might say omit instead. That's right. And I think it's a common phrasal verb. Right, Eric? Yes, it's quite common. We use it often when talking about keeping or taking out things. And it's useful in many situations, from cooking to writing to planning events. I agree. Any tips for our listeners on how to use it, Eric? Remember, leave out can be accidental or intentional. You can leave out something if you want, or you should not leave out this or that. Great point, Eric. And remember, sometimes leaving things out can change the whole meaning. For example, in our podcasts, we try not to leave out any important details, but sometimes we leave out some unnecessary things. Fantastic summary, Lisa. I think our listener understood leave out now better. I think so, Eric. Okay, let's move on to the last word of today. The last word today is... At the drop of a hat. At the drop of a hat. At the drop of a hat. At the drop of a hat is an idiom that means to do something immediately or without thinking. When someone does something at the drop of a hat, they do it very quickly and without hesitation. That's right, Eric. This idiom is often used to describe someone who is ready to act or make a decision very quickly. Now, let's give two example sentences to help everyone understand it better. Sure, here's my example. She's always ready to help her friends at the drop of a hat. It means that she will help her friends immediately without thinking twice. Good example, Eric. My example is, he would quit his job at the drop of a hat if he found a better opportunity. It means that, he would leave his job right away without any hesitation if he got a better offer. Now, let's give a short dialogue to show how at the drop of a hat can be used in conversation. Did you hear about Tom? He decided to move to another city. Wow, that was fast. He's the type to do things at the drop of a hat. Yeah, he didn't even think twice about it. Just packed his bags and left. That's Tom for you. Always ready to make a big change at the drop of a hat. That was a nice example, Eric. It shows how at the drop of a hat is used to describe someone who makes quick decisions. Yes, Lisa, it's a very colorful phrase that describes how some people act fast without delay. Now, let's talk a bit about at the drop of a hat. Well, Eric, I think at the drop of a hat is useful because it helps us describe actions or decisions that are made immediately. I agree. And at the drop of a hat is quite common in both everyday conversation and storytelling. It's a fun way to talk about someone who doesn't need much time to make up their mind. Exactly, Eric. Also, it's easy to remember. Just imagine a hat dropping and someone taking it from the ground. Good visual, Lisa. 
So listeners, try using at the drop of a hat when you want to talk about someone who is ready to act or decide very quickly. Yes, it's a fun idiom to use. Agreed. Well, I think we have reached the end of our podcast today. Thanks for listening to Simply Explained English. We hope you found today's words helpful. See you in the next episode with more simple English explanations. Bye for now.